create access points. People do. Okay, people create the doors. If you do that, then there's going to be some level of bondage in your life. Uh, not all the bondage is the same, um, you know, but it's all demonic. And demonic is not good. Okay. Um, we talked about there's no such thing as a demon having illegal access. I know that's something that people say they when they pray they'll say you know I command all demons who have entered in illegally. There's no illegal access into one's life. Demons come in legally. We provide that access uh, in our life to them and for them. We may not have, especially when we're young, um, but not only when we were young been ignorant of how the operations work. This is why the Bible is very clear. Do not be ignorant of the devil's devices, how the enemy uh, maneuvers, how the enemy comes in. Okay. I mentioned to you just by way of recap that demons use primarily uh, the following access points, thought, emotions, and then of course, corresponding access. We could even say that the thoughts, emotions, and corresponding actions are uh, derived because we have walked in the flesh in a particular area. So if you are walk, walking in the flesh, which many of us uh, throughout today, there will be points where you walk in the flesh, okay? Um, it's not always, but it's very common that we walk in the spirit here, then we walk in the flesh here. So we're on point here, walking in the spirit, but over here, we're walking in the flesh. And is the flesh demonic? Absolutely. So when people say demons and flesh, don't think that the flesh is somehow lesser than demons or a demon or that which is demonic. It's not. The, the flesh, the Word of God <clears throat> says that the flesh is enmity against God. Now, if we go back to the garden, okay, we go back in Genesis that there was enmity between man and the serpent. And of course, that serpent represents in part Satan, that which opposes, and of course, the flesh and, or the carnal mind. Okay? So don't think, oh, I was just in the flesh and that's not dangerous. It's extremely dangerous, highly toxic, tremendously septic, and will open up doors uh, for demons. Demons are not going to just give you a pass because you're in the flesh. They're going to say, well, there's my access point. Okay. So we started talking last week about, uh, in access points, we talked about uh, sin. Okay. Sin means to miss the mark. Then we went into another access point, emotional wounds and life circumstances or life events. Events. We talked about uh, childhood, early uh, childhood uh, trauma within childhood. And I went through some things that have had occurred in my life. Um, and that's where we're going to pick it up. We're going to move away from that today, but we're going to need to pick it up there and just talk about a few things. So um, mark this scripture down or write this scripture down, Matthew 18, 6. I'll read it to you. You could look at it later. Matthew 18, 6, Jesus uh, is standing and he's talking and there's many children around. And Jesus says this, he says, if anyone causes one of these little ones who believe in me to stumble, it would be better for them to have a large millstone hung around their neck and be drowned into the sea. So those are very strong words by Jesus. I often wondered why he used those strong words. You know, he's basically saying, hey, you know, go kill yourself. Now, is Jesus promoting suicide? Of course not. It's this, this, this statement by Jesus is designed to bring about a strong message, okay? Express the seriousness of how children are handled, okay? Um, literally or figuratively, it could be spiritually or naturally. Um, ch children uh, in the faith, I'm talking about adults who are babes in Christ, many times we use that term, they need to be handled very delicately. But for this discussion, we're talking about children, literally. Okay, so whether you have children, of course you were once a child, how your parents raised you 
um, the environment that you were in, the situations emotionally, physically, mentally, spiritually, all of that had a tremendous impact on your life without question. Okay. Uh, up to about the age of eight, maybe 10 could be extended a little bit early, a little bit further, but between eight and 10 at that point, that's where you were going to launch your life from mentally, obviously intellectually, you're going to grow physically, you're going to grow, but we can be in a, in a, in a stuck place emotionally. And it's when we're stuck emotionally, specifically at some point of trauma or abuse, uh, event that has happened in life at eight, between eight and 10, that's, that's where we're catapulting from. That's the launch pad for our life. And so a lot of the things that we do, obviously a lot of the things that we think or the way we think our feelings, our corresponding behaviors are going to link to that. So if there was things that occurred in life, specifically some level of trauma, and we've all had trauma. Okay. No one is really exempt from trauma, but if you don't get through trauma or worse yet, the parent or the, 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 the um, environment that you were in created the trauma, that's going to be a major impact on your life. And this is why God sent his word to heal us from all our afflictions. He, he gave us the, the, uh, the word of deliverance. He preached the word of the kingdom. He preached the kingdom. He said, you know, I've come to set at, uh, set those who are bound free. We all need deliverance. Deliverance is the children's bread. Okay. Um, but again, we're, we're, we're here trying to understand what are the access points. So, uh, I gave you some last week, sickness within the family, uh, disease, death of a family member. I told you my dad died when I was seven, uh, surgeries. I mentioned I had a surgery at, at three. Actually, I believe earlier on, my mom had told me, of course, I don't remember this stuff, but early on in my life, uh, they had to do pretty close to birth from what my mom said to me, um, full blood transfusion. Okay. So these type of things are tremendously traumatic to a child and they can open the door to demon, demonic spirits. It's the parent's job to protect children by way of nurturing them, loving them, clearly raising them the way that God says to raise them. And when that doesn't happen either or didn't happen to us, or we do not do that with our children, you know, we're just asking trouble for trouble per se. Okay. Um, this is why you need to understand the kingdom. You don't need to understand religion. You need to understand the kingdom and his words, uh, his word, follow that word, obey that word. Why call me Lord, Lord, if you don't do what I tell you, we need to do the things he says and for our life. And then of course, when it comes to our children, we need to raise them up, raise them up God's way. Not based on what mama said, daddy said, what the Joneses say, what the what the, what the Patrick say or what, whatever your last name is or surname is, don't, you don't do it that way. Whatever your culture is, your race, uh, your, your, you don't do it that way. You do it God's way. And if not, we have problems. That's why in part, we have many of the problems that we have today. So we talked about that surgeries, uh, life events. Um, I can give you some examples. I remember my dad died in 68. He died in 68. And at that time I do remember living in Chicago. Now remember, this is in, in the day of radio and black and white TV. Um, and I remember when Bobby Kennedy was assassinated, uh, that was traumatic to me um, because why? The response from the family, oh my goodness, you know, and it was like all this chaos in the world. Um, my uh, Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated in 68. And then of course my dad died right at that point all of that trauma to me, nobody explained it to me. Nobody told me what was going on. And of course that opened the door for some type of bondage in my life, whether it be rejection, insecurity, low self-esteem, lack of confidence. Okay. Uh, all of those type things, that's what happens. Okay. Um, so life events can clearly have a part to play in your life. You have to think back, you know, what did I see? What was going on? Uh, television is another, uh, Porthole. Of course, today things are different. You have television, internet, game systems, and I'm not saying don't watch TV, don't look on the internet, or don't play a game. That, that, that's not what I'm saying. What I am saying is that these can be 
keyword is can. Okay, there's potential for uh, for demonic activity or demonic portholes to open up, especially when we're younger. Okay, take a kid, throw him in front of the television. There's going to be problems, but specifically, it's what is watched on television. You know, um, let me just say something about that. The Word of God is very clear that we are to govern what our eyes see, what our ears hear. You need to be careful what you see, and you need to be careful what you hear. Clearly, television, we just kind of click it and say, oh yeah, it's no problem. And then we're watching things like, I remember years ago, they had this uh, series that was going on. I can't remember exactly uh, what it was about because I never watched it, but I heard some things about it. It was called Scandal. Scandal. And people were all into it and they would get out there. Christians I'm talking about. They'd get out there on social media talk about, hey, Scandal, can't wait for Scandal to come out. We have to, and, and again, it's not just that one. I'm certain there's many, many others. Um, reality TV, horrible. We watch these things and our kids watch them or they're looking over our shoulders and watching these things. You know, it, it's all dysfunction, it's all trauma, it's all drama, and that can be an access point. Um, again, I was a young child in the 60s, Vietnam was going on, um, the news, you would hear of all this devastation. In 69, in Chicago, we had the riots um, when Martin Luther King was assassinated. I mean, you know, certain parts of the city were burning down, folks were going crazy. You know, I heard a, a, a statement in my home, um, it was racial, and it was like, you know, there's gonna be all this craziness and there was this blame cast on certain uh, people group. And, and it, 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 again, that opens the doors or can open the door for demonic activity in your life, okay? Um, the news. Reading material, specifically, uh, you know, again, today's the internet, but back then we didn't have internet. We had newspaper, we had magazines come to the house, and I'm going to share this with you. Watch this. We had a, a magazine come to the house called Newsweek magazine, and um, this is in the early maybe '74 ish. Uh, a movie came out called The Exorcist, and so in '74 I would have been like, you know what? Well, actually it would have been earlier because I know I was younger than that. So I, I was around 10 years old. So 10 or 11 years old. So it's like 72-ish, okay? Um, this magazine came to the home and on it, it was talking about this movie called The Exorcist. And I would flip, again, my parents laid it out. I would flip through it and I got to a place where they were talking about this movie. And I don't remember very much what it said because I really, I don't even remember reading it. I remember the pictures and those pictures of this demonic face. Of course, this is Hollywood. I understand that now, but the demonic face, it showed a head turned backwards. It was just insidious and all that stuff. I, re I can go back and I remember how I felt when I looked at that magazine and the emotional component. I, I, I sensed this fear, this tremendous phobia and fear and, you know, and I was scared. I'll just be perfectly honest with you. I was scared. Not only was I scared or afraid, I was terrified. And I'm telling you, I went to bed that night and, be, and that fear gripped me so bad, so much, that and when I was in my bed, and I'm not saying this literally happened, but to me, and this is, remember, the devil, the demons, they attack your mind, they attack your emotions, right? That's, that's, that's where they get you. To me, when I went to bed at night, I could feel my bed levitate. And I was terrified. I was terrified. I mean, I can recall that day, my head in my pillow, and I was terrified. And I yelled out to my dad, my, my stepdad, but my dad nonetheless. I yelled out to him and I said, can you please you know, stay in here with me while I sleep. Now I'm, I'm at that time, 10, 11, maybe extended it, maybe 12. I can't remember which, but my point is this, this could be an access point. Again, I'm just talking about reading materials. Today it's internet. Your kids can go on with their phones, 
the internet, and they can click and click and click and click. And, and, and that, I mean, today, that pales in comparison to what is available today. And then you wonder why we have all this da demonic activity. You wonder why we have so many children bound by demons, suicide at an all-time high with children, okay? Teens, okay? Teen pr uh, pregnancies, children out of wedlock, uh, teens murdering, killing, uh, uh, going to school and just doing insidious, uh, yeah. You wonder why, how can a, how can a 12 year old start smoking weed? Well, it's, again, demons, once you open the door, demons are gonna come right through it, okay? So again, I'm just trying to share some things with you to give you a little bit of information here. Again, we don't wanna be ignorant of the devil's devices. Um, materials, so even materials from school. Today, school materials, they're giving children today uh, books. Uh, first grade, teaching them, showing them how to masturbate, okay? That's what's going on out there. And Christians have their head in the sand and they're, or, or they're trying to fight demons at some, some level way up in the heavenlies, but they won't deal, they won't do the word of God, deal with themselves and their children in a healthy way, okay? Uh, encouraging your children, spending time with your children, loving your children, validating your children, protecting your children. I'm not talking about be religious. Don't beat them over the head with the Bible and tell them, oh, you know, this is demonic or that's demonic and hit them over the head. You need Jesus. No, no, that's going to pull them away from Jesus. Okay? What you need to do is teach them and explain them. I like what my wife, she says this consistently. She says, look, don't think that demons attack children differently than adults. No, demons, they want you when you're young. Most of your problems today that you have in life are because when you were young, a child, you were left unattended from a spiritual perspective. Yeah, you may have went to church. I don't care if you went to church. Okay, I didn't go to church. And a matter of fact, for, to me, I now see that it was better for me that I didn't go to church. I didn't get all religiousized, denominationalized, you know, uh, tricked into all this stuff where I went down that, that path of religion, okay? Uh, it, you know, it, I just came right into the kingdom, okay? I think that's the better way. Teach people, teach your kids the kingdom. Not what the Baptists believe or the Pentecostals or the Church of God, Church of God in Christ, somebody's God and all the other 30 some thousand denominations, okay? So again, you got school materials going on, you have books about uh, alternative lifestyles, all this stuff's happening out there. Demons are going to come right through. Okay? Um, other types of doors open. Divorce. Okay? Parents. Um, think of yourself if your parents got divorced. Uh, or if you have been or you are considering divorce to a child. Tremendously traumatic. Separation. Children can have separation anxiety. What psych uh, psychiatrists refer to refer to in therapists as separation anxiety. But they could have a spirit of abandonment, separation, uh, um, insecurity, inferiority, because parents separate. And when I say separate, I'm talking about parents separating. I, I know parents, adults rather, that live, they're married, live in the same house, different rooms, different levels, totally different bedrooms. They don't talk. You think a child, whatever age, doesn't, doesn't see that? Doesn't participate in that at a young age? You're the, you're the adult. You're the one, or your parents were the adults. They were the ones that should have kept that from you and, and, and dealt with that in their life, got their own deliverance, okay? Um, drama, parents that are dramatic, okay? Uh, moms that are dramatic, you know, make everything a major issue. Okay, uh, uh, or dads, but drama, everything. Oh my God, falling out over the littlest thing. Nobody loves me. Nobody cares. You know, fake sickness, fake illness, fake, uh, fake this, fake that. Dramatic. That that's an access point to children. Okay, uh, obviously death. I told you my dad died when I was seven. Uh, sickness, uh, sickness uh, in the family, parents, um, all of this. 
okay, can open the door. Now, I want you to understand that in, in this thing, as we're talking about access points to demons, in, in, in trauma, in children, there's basically five access points or five levels of trauma or five points of trauma to a child. So think of your family of origin. Think of your home today. Is it conducive, the environment, to demons? What books are laying around your house? Okay. What movies do you watch? Okay. It's not that you can't watch movies. Okay. I could watch if I wanted to. I could watch something uh, totally like a horror movie, although I really don't want watch them any longer. But I could. But if I did, I don't have children laying around and all this stuff, and I understand it's Hollywood and all that. But a child doesn't co comprehend that. When I was that exorcist thing, I wasn't thinking Hollywood. I was thinking reality. And as a man believes in his heart, so is he, good or bad. Okay? The difference between then and whatever was because at that age, I gave total authority to that thing. You follow me? I gave it power. It was nothing. It was nothing. That that whole book, Exorcist, pictures, in and of itself, it's nothing. But to me, I gave it power. Does that make any sense? Whereas, you know, 20 years ago or whatever the timeline is, I give it no power. But I gave it power then. And that which you gave power to or authority to, it will bond you. And it did to me. Okay. I got it. You, you, I got it. I mean, I, I I, I, it was now. a great question. I just want to make sure I'm answering. I understand now. So you gave no power to the other horror movies that, that you would that you watched, but that one you gave power to. And that's the same thing with Rob. I was like, I saw the same thing. And I thought, right. how can they look at all this? And then, because me, I was like, I'm looking at none of it. <laughs> no. well, we, we all, but, uh, exactly. Okay, so I'll, I'll, I got I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm tell my wife for a minute, okay? <laughs> because I mean, and, and look what you, look what look what you do, for example, okay? Well, you and I could be watching something, and it's not even a horror movie, <laughs> but it could be the music playing up. And I don't and, even like to see people getting killed, right? In the movie. And I, you'll I take just my hand. Out. My wife will that. take my hand and do like this. <laughs> she'll take my hand over her face, <laughs> and she'll, but she's still peeking through. <laughs> Because I, I don't like to see that. Right. No, some, no, not all of it. Some of them I don't even peek through. I don't even want to see it. Right. Just, but but, but, you but, see I, but this is a good, this is a good, it's really good that you're exposing mm. this because, you know, um, I think, you know, because I, I, I know that, that they're, you know, like you said, entry points for demons are their gates, you know, your eyes, your ears, even yeah. your mouth. Your oh, mouth is touch. People uh, touch. Well, we know touch, but I don't think matter people fact, realize all the five people, senses. Yeah, ab absolutely. Okay. Oh my uh, God, that's right. But listen, what I think people don't see is they don't they don't think about their mouth being an integrated demon. They really don't. But uh, but it. Oh, it I could give you a ton of examples on that. Yeah, one. that's um, a whole that's alcohol, a whole other teaching. Yeah, it, you know, um, um, marijuana. All those things can be an intro road to demons. So I, I really got it. I yeah, really I'm, got I'm not it. Gonna go, now the, I'm not going to go there because because that, that again that's a teaching for now. I know that's we'll a teaching yourself. Maybe I we'll know, I know, yeah. I know. But this, but that you really answered my question because I I right. never thought to ask you why, but that was something I always wondered. All right, thanks. No, awesome question. Thank you so much, sir. Okay, Amy, I see your hand up. Come off mute. Okay, I have a question regarding. Um, I get, okay, like, can, you know, you were saying, like, clouds of demons can be, like, over your family or whatnot, and I just remember, it, this goes back, like, two generations, and it's, like, my, the women in the family, like, the the matriarchs of the family are more always so fearful, and it seemed to, like, pass down through the generations, and I can mm -hmm. see it in my household. Right. So, um, how do you break that cycle? Well, exactly. That's why we're doing what we're doing here, right? Okay. Understanding the kingdom because that's the power. Okay. The power is within the kingdom of God. The preaching of the kingdom, preaching of the Christ, the king, is the power. That's first and foremost. And then 
deliverance, which goes together with the kingdom. You get free. When we're talking about deliverance, remember, we're talking about renewing the mind primarily. We're talking about cleansing or healing the bruised emotions. And we're talking about now even the eradication of demonic spirits. You go through that process. You know, the Bible talks about in Exodus, little by little did God drive Israel's enemies out. And their enemies were the pagans, okay? That's how our life today. Little by little, as you learn more here, you, 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 some of you may be getting free right now. You could be in a place right now and get, be getting totally free, okay? From all the bondage, the demons, whatever. So Amy, the way that you do it is you begin to shift your mind into a different place. You get your emotions healed. We're gonna go into forgiveness and bitterness in a moment here, hopefully. Um, you get free from any unforgiveness and so on, okay? Then you break that curse. You are the curse breaker. Okay. Okay. And when right. we break the curse, it's because we just don't do things the way our ancestors did. Them. We change. Okay. Right. Okay. All right. Got it. Okay. Got it. Thanks. You're welcome. Okay. So let's go. So I was going into five. Uh, oh, and, and I want to. Lewis says alcohol brought a lot of trauma and dysfunction in my family as a child. Absolutely. Alcohol. Okay. Drug usage. We'll get into some of that in a, hopefully in a moment. I don't know if we will. But absolutely, 100%. Okay, so five areas. So I want you guys to think about this. The five major areas to a, of trauma to a child are number one, rejection, okay, from family of origin, mom, dad, brother, sister. So what is rejection? Well, you know, it's a lot of things, but it's, you know, uh, not connecting with, no participation in, not supporting. Um, it can be words that you heard, things like you're too short, you're too tall i'm a tall person okay so if you keep on hearing wow you're so clumsy and tall again to a child we we, we go inward and then potentially as we start thinking and emotionally connecting to what was said by parents or family of origin R remember this check this out to you as a child your parents were god that's what a child looks when a child because a child doesn't know anything. A child looks at who's feeding me, who's closing me, who's taking care of me, who's there, and children look to parents as God. Over time, that's going to change as that child is introduced to God or transitioned to understand how God and who God is, and then of course the born again uh, experience themselves. But at a young age, a child says, "Well, you know, that's the authority." So whether the words are positive or negative, whether the actions are positive or negative, a child puts great respect, as it were, to what parent does or says. So if 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 I'm if if I'm just told, well, you're you're tall and clumsy, I even though I don't like it, it hurt me, I accept it because mom and dad said it, or brother or sister said it. Okay? So Rejection from the family of origin is, is huge. Too light, you're too dark. Um, my wife is lighter skinned uh, versus her, her, her other brothers and sisters, and, and even her mom, for that example. Okay, her dad was light. But she heard some negative things from her family of origin in regard to that. That probably caused some problem if, with, with, with my wife in the area of rejection. Okay, I'm not saying it's the only thing, but you have to understand demons link up. See, once you understand deliverance and you understand, again, we're not to be ignorant of the devil's devices, you, you, there's not one demon in operation. Well, I cast out rejection. No, there's a clustering of demonic spirits. And this is why we're talking the way we're, we're talking today is to get you understanding, whether it's, whether it's cocaine or, or, or vodka. I mean, it's, it's, it's separate things and it brings in different types of, of demons. Remember, demons, the, the names we give demons are mo built more about characteristics than their actual name. And there's a lot of characteristics, thousands perhaps. Okay? So rejection from family of origin, incest. Now, some incest. No, incest exists. As a as a, uh, a a person who preaches, teaches, and applies deliverance in other people's lives and in, in, in my own as well. What what I've under what I've found out is that incest does exist. Not in some other country, but in this country. 
okay? Yes, there's certain people, groups, races, and or cultures that have a propensity to engage in incest more, okay? 40-year-old, I mean, I, I coach somebody, 40-year-old uncle marrying his 12-year-old uh, niece, okay? Yeah, for real. This is real stuff. So that exists. Um, molestation is another one of the key or major uh, trauma points to a child. Child molested. It's molestation is not only sexual penetration, okay? But it could be seeing things. And I don't want to go into all the details. There's there's no reason, purpose to do that. But it's more than just intercourse. It could be seeing things, hearing things, watching things. Again, go back to television. A child sitting there. I, I mean, the, the, the things that I have heard, actual people, things they've gone through, and or my own life. Man, demons are, are you, yeah, they're... They have a lot of people bound, but it goes back usually to 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 something that happened in childhood. So molestation, um, you know, you, we drop our kids off the babe at the daycare. All it takes, watch this. All it takes is one daycare worker to take a baby who who soiled the diaper, who is a has perversion on them, to go to change that baby and touch that baby inappropriately. That baby, that's called a violation. God puts all this in us. Okay, we know when we're violated. We, when a woman has sex with a man out of wedlock, she, something, you may not have thought it, you may not have been conscious aware, but inside, that's a violation. And it's cause, gonna cause problems. One of the first things I always ask people when I, we do a, a relationship coaching or marital coaching is, y'all have sex before marriage? And if the answer is yes, well, there's some, you open the door there. Okay? Now, I'm not saying that that's the only reason. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is you open the door. Okay? You wanted to, when you, when you were a parent and you had a baby and you wanted to bring the baby in the room because you didn't want to be bothered with the baby crying and you all were having sex and stuff like that, you open the door. Okay? So, a lot going on here. So molestation, I think the statistics are like this, about 50% of women have been molested. Race has a lot to do with it or something to do with it. Um, but men, I think the clip is about 25%. Again, a lot of factors there. It's a major problem is all I'm saying, okay? Um, emotional and verbal abuse by family of origin, again, too light, too dark, you're stupid, you're no good, cussing you out. I mean, I'll beat the bippity bop out of you, all, all this stuff, okay? Major problem. All this at a young age certainly creates mental, emotional trauma and do pathways for demonic spirits to come in. And then, of course, physical abuse, okay? Punching, slashing, scratching, throwing dishes across the room, throwing, you know, bats at somebody, whatever. Again, those are those are trauma areas for children. Okay? And I'm not gonna I could spend literally days and weeks on just this topic right here of, of trauma. But we're gonna move away from that because I want to get into something today. Um as far as another way. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> I give you go ahead. Take come off mute though. Okay. All right. I'm I'm sorry that you're getting away from this, but I think it's I think it's something that that you shouldn't get away from because just maybe not even ten years ago, um, I realized that something that I was traumatized with as a child was in my behavior as an adult. Okay. And um, and 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 I I want to share that. If that's okay. Yeah. Please do. Okay. All right. So um. I was, we were actually at a conference and um, I was sharing uh, about the fact that when I was younger, my mother would always discipline me about, you know, she said, I get you a pair of shoes and two weeks later, they're worn out. Mm -hmm. You're horrible. You, what do you got? Your feet. Oh my God, you got big feet and you're just clumsy and you're horrible. And you're just, and you just, every, I mean, your shoes don't last well. There was some truth in the fact that my shoes did not 
did not last very long where to, uh, compared to my sister, who my sister wore like a size five. And at the time I wore like a size eight and her feet were tiny and, and cute and, and she didn't wear her shoes out. She had, she had shoes for years and years and my shoes were gone within a month or two. So I was, um, I was sharing that at a conference and, um, and then I had also shared that um, I had made in my mind that I would never have a pair of shoes wear out on me. So as a, as a result, I had about 200, oh, 200 plus pairs of shoes. Yeah. Buddy. It was ridiculous. It, it was ridiculous. I, I mean, it was bad. And, um, and I, um, I had no problem with it. I mean, even though, I mean, who has 200 plus pairs of shoes? It's just like, that's ridiculous. But at the time, I saw nothing wrong with it. Absolutely nothing wrong with it. And would go, I even bought the same shoe, duplicate shoes. If it was something I like to be sure that the shoe didn't wear out because I would, because I put another pair on. But the thing I want to share is that at that conference, I was sharing this. And then one of the pastors there said something. And right in that conference, I got delivered. He said, he said, are all those shoes a result of the trauma that you experienced as a child? And I started crying, right? Right then. I didn't even realize it. So sometimes the trauma we experience, we're acting it out as an adult and we're not even sure why we're doing some of the things we do. I mean, to excessively buy, when I went to go buy shoes, I never bought a pair of shoes. Like most people go get a pair of shoes or they might get two. I would get no, no less than three to five pairs of shoes at one time. So it just, I didn't realize that that was a result of me with the fear of that was a fear that I wasn't going to have a pair of shoes wear out. And it was ridiculous because some of those shoes I couldn't wear that many. I mean, goodness, I have to wear a different pair of shoes almost every day of the year. And I'd have a few days left over. So I'd get worn if I wore them all once, twice. I couldn't even wear all of them twice a year. But the whole point was, is that it was stemming from trauma. Right. And that you have to get to because that is not, that's not godly. And it's not meant to let your trauma guide you, lead your life, right. to, uh, take you to play what you should purchase, what you should not purchase. All that should be led by right. the spirit of God. You know, everything, it should be directed by the Lord. Yep. But trauma will direct you if it's not dealt with, if it's not you know, it's not brought to the surface. And that was it. I had to share that. No, but, but, but we're going to stay with that for a moment because I want to I want to show everybody something. Okay, so when you were, when when Mama Dixie was young, young child, her mother, and again, when, this doesn't make her mother a bad person, okay? People do things because they just have historically done things or they grew up Okay, I forgot this part. So I had a lady bring me a beautiful pair of boots. I mean, they were just, oh my goodness. They were leather and maybe snake skin or something. Beautiful pair of boots. And she said, I wanted to bless you and I bought you these boots. And she didn't ask what size I wore. So she bought the boots in 11. And I said, I can't wear these boots. I said, I wear eight, eight and a half. I can't do nothing with this boot. And... <laughs> I was so upset because she said, well, for the size woman, your height, you know, you should wear, probably be wearing like a, a 10 or 11. So I thought 11 would be fine. So all that I was told wasn't, I thought I, I, I would tell people I have big feet. I've got big feet because that's what my mom said. And that's what I said. So I just wanted to share that part. Okay. You, it wasn't even true. It's a lie. Right. So you're saying a lot here, and I, I need to, we're going to probably spend most of the rest of our time on this now. Okay, which is good. Okay, so let's go back. So her, her mother makes this statement when she's a child, okay, um, about wearing out shoes and, and all that, okay? That affected her. It affected her emotionally. She carries this. Now she's going through life, okay? She gets to a certain age. That 
you, you know how we use the term, we'll, we'll say program, there's a program running. There's a paradigm running. There's a strong hold, okay, a fortified way of thinking. Remember, that is deep within the sub or below conscious. She's not thinking about this every day, okay? But it's there. And the, the, the demons, because how do we know it's, it was demonic with her? Was because it was chronic. She was always, she loaded up on it. I mean, 200 pairs of shoes, which may be a small number. Okay, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I, I've seen them. Okay, now deliverance has taken place, thank God. But anyways, that, that, that opened the door to spirits such as, you know, uh, poverty, poverty mindset. Uh, I won't have, I'll never have enough. Those, those are, understand, those are demonic spirits that can and most likely do come in and they, they, they latch on to the emotional insecurity, the emotional wound or pain and the mindset that is saying to self, I am going to, because I'm, you know, I got my feet and I'm clumsy or I blow through shoes. All of that stuff her mother said runs deep within. Now that's serious. And, 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 and you can't just say, well, I'm 30 now, I'm 40 now, I'm 50 now, whatever. I'm over that. A lot of people say I'm over that, but they're not over that. What they're doing is they're suppressing it. Okay. And we need to get, this is why we talk about getting to the root of the issue. Okay. Because it may, may not manifest in shoes. Now it can manifest in other things. Um, people could hoard. I, I mean, hoarding or, or excuse me, uh, hoarding is a, is a, is a big problem that people have. I mean, they have so much stuff. It's unbelievable. You may have people in your own family that you've seen this, or it could be you. Where does that come from? I'm going to tell you, it comes from someplace within the family or, or uh, family of origin, or as Amy was talking about, uh, ants, the, 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 the mindset of ancestors or the culture, whatever. And the next thing you know, it's like, well, you know, it could be an event. My, my parents went through the great depression, the great depression, which is different than our, you know, stagflation or inflation or recession stuff that we deal with today. Okay. You think you think six six dollars and fifty cents seven dollar gallon gas? No, they didn't have money for gas. Okay, it was bad, really bad. But my my parents went through that, and of course, did that affect them? Yeah, they went my, they went through it when they were children. So that spirit of 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 worry, fear, poverty, lack, all that stuff kept them in bondage. What did they do? They taught me that initially. Okay. You don't, you don't know credit cards, save for a rainy day. You know, uh, you put your money under the mattress. Don't give, you know, all this stuff. Don't put all your money in banks, yada, yada, yada. Okay. And, and again, that can be demonic. So, you know, <laughs> in, in a way, Mama Dixie said something else. She said, okay, so, the, the shoe size. Here's 11 size boot. Okay. She, that's not her shoe size. Okay. Um, the lady says to her, well, you, oh, you know, you, a woman, uh, you know, I don't know, whatever she said, height or yeah, based on how tall she is, you should have uh, bigger feet. Okay. So, so I'm, I'm not going to go there with her because what that was said, she was a little bit older. However, when we were young, if you ever heard this statement from your family of origin, parents in particular, why don't you go out and I'll give you an example. Maybe you were a homebody. You stayed at home, played yourself, you know, whatever. Didn't really like going out. Okay. If a parent says this, you need to go out and play just like the rest of your friends or said another way. You need to be like them. Let me tell you something to you as a child, that's a major porthole because that's the only thing you cannot be like. 
You cannot be like others. Do you hear what I'm saying? You cannot be like someone else. So that is a huge rejection portal that's going to take you down a rabbit hole to try to compensate that thing. And you will find yourself do, have you ever found yourself doing something that you really don't want to do or wearing something you don't, I mean, you, you know, getting the, you may, there's people that regret tra uh, tattoos. I, I'm not talking for or against tattoos. That's not, I have nothing to do with that. However, there are people that have huge regrets. Well, why'd you do it? They were doing it because everybody else is doing it. And that's the message many of you have been shared with when you were young. Come on. You were told, be like them. Be like that person. And that's still going on today. We're trying to look like somebody. We, you know, it, it wouldn't phase you today if you were told when you were young by your family of origin, you are unique, you are creating God's image and likeness, there's only one you, you have value, and so on. That's what you needed. That's what we all needed. But by and large, 90-some percent of us did not get that. And again, that is the areas where demonic spirits can and usually do come in. And again, the bondage, you know, some people, obviously bondage can be severe. A person, you know, in bondage to alcohol or drugs or some sexual addiction or, you know, whatever it may be, you know, that that's severe. You can see it. It's It's got a huge impact. But bondage is bondage. It could be something so small that can keep you from ever realizing. Remember, the goal of demons, the goal of Satan, all of this darkness, its goal is to torment you and to keep you from realizing who you are in him. That's it. Okay? Don't come up with all these unique things. It's very simple. Keep it simple here. Okay? If, if the enemy can get you when you're young, get the thinking wrong, get the emotions wounded, get the, get the, get the workers or the demons in, to keep you going down a path until you're like 80, 90, or whatever, whenever, not 100, whatever it is that you die and you leave this planet. As long as you never realize who you are, that's all he cares about. Because once you realize who you are, once you get free, once you start to understand the things pertaining to the kingdom of God and the keys of the kingdom that Jesus gave us, and you know who you are in him, uh-oh, look out. That's what, that's, what, that's what the devil fears, okay? That's when he knows his time in your life is up. And if the enemy's time in your life is up, then you begin to impact other people, okay? You begin to impact society. You begin to impact sectors of society and so on, okay? I hope this is ministering to some of you today, okay? So again, this is, you know, you probably have your own story of trauma. And again, I would recommend, you know, if you, again, I believe, we believe in coaching. Get the coaching you need. Work this stuff out. Okay? And don't just go for one appointment or three months or whatever. Consistently do some maintenance work. Learn. Then start taking it from there. Okay?